What's the plan? Well, first plan, we'll see how this goes, is to use one of these little connectors on the end, crimp it on, and if Where I get... Where are we crimping? Just one of these little connectors here. What cable, sorry? Oh, sorry, this is, uh, <laughs> this is our cable for our radar. So you can see all these cables. We've got lots of different uh, aluminum sheeting and stuff, and our main power wires. And then you got, anyways, you got 10 wires I think in total. So we're going to see if we can pull this through. Hopefully, we have some success. So this is going to go on one of them, I hope. So we got the cable for the radar all tied up, good enough, hopefully. And now we're gonna try to tape it so that it's kind of clean, kind of doesn't catch anywhere, and hopefully goes up the mast nice and smooth. But it's a huge cable, so I'm really kind of dreading seeing how that's gonna go. It's gotta go up. So the moment of truth, we're gonna try pulling the radar cable up through the mass. Hopefully it works. By the way, that radar was actually given to us for free last year. It's a bit of an older model, but seems like it works. We actually have a video that will link that up here about uh, when Corey actually tried to figure out and tried to make it work. So let's see if that works. So we're trying to pull it out of the hole, but it's, um, it's tight, to say the least. Well, oh. We got the string at least. Woo! Let's see now, can I pull? If you can't pull, we can, I can always go push it from below. Come on, baby. We got it. We got it out. High five. Gotta be careful not to chafe it too much. Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, just some slight modifications. <laughs> The angle wasn't quite right, so we're making it closer. It won't be perfect, but it'll work. What are you doing with this bottle? Uh, it's just a little bit of pen, a little bit of oil, but anyway, to lubricate the end of the drill bit so I don't burn it out as easily. Hopefully I'll be able to do all these with this one drill bit at least. It's getting pretty pretty warm so pause behind the travel lift and a little bit of shade drinking some beers and now we're gonna keep going at the best i think but my back is like burnt which is why i'm wearing a sweater even though it's like 28 degrees celsius <laughs> it's really hot and there's no wind <laughs> so i don't know about you guys but i really don't like cutting big cables well at least not before i double ch and triple check that i got the right length because for some reason it's so easy to cut things too short. I mean, you can always normally give yourself more than enough extra at either end to be sure you're gonna have enough. But when we're talking about our big radar cable here, I don't necessarily have a whole lot of margin for error because I need as much cable on the boat side of things as possible. So I've got to figure out pretty much what I want to set up over here is 
I've got lo loads of extra cable here that will get to the back of the radar. And I might even run it down one of the arms here on the radar mount. And I'm going to give myself just a little bit out the end, kind of like what a lot of these cables are here. So I'm going to cut it somewhere here. Let's do this. We got all these cables coming out. I want it about as long as these because I don't want a ton of excess. We're probably going to cut it right here. Let's do this. Okay, hopefully I, get, I gave myself enough room. So unfortunately our holes here don't line up with our radar holes. So we're going to have to make a secondary little bit of a bracket to actually bolt down into and then we can bolt that bracket onto our radar mount. So between that and doing some soldering for our radar and getting our lights rewired. One of the steps of checking our mask, making sure it's good, is looking at all of our metal stays. And I'm running a little paper towel all along them just to see if there's any threads or like loose that broke off. And then I would catch on this and rip it off. So let's do this. How's it going? So far, so good. All of our stays seem to be in really good shape actually. Haven't found any rust, any tore thread. So that's awesome. Because it's pretty old. I really don't know what age this is, but. Go away. Bueno. They all look good? Yeah, they're all good. The only one I can't really have a look at is the one in the roller furler. Beautiful tape makes some pretty awesome seals. Having fun? Looking good, Elder.
end of the day. This right here is a mess. There's way too many connections. So we're gonna try to reduce the connectors and put some shrink wrap to make sure everything's nice and waterproof. So I don't know if you can see that, but this random red wire is broken off, but there's nowhere to put it back to. I don't know where it broke off from. There's one terminal here and one terminal here, but there's already a wire going to both of those. So, and then it continues back here into this mess of wires that goes into the mast. So I'm gonna have to do a bit of testing and figure out what's going on here. I swear I just got a, a reading on this. Why is it not doing it anymore? Well that, yeah, obviously it's the same wire. Okay, so what's up? So it was a little bit confusing the way this was wired, but I think I got it figured out. Um, basically there's a common ground between all of the lights on the mast and each wire, each of the other wires is for power to each light. So I go here, what I did was I just wired this white wire which then goes back to here and then back to the, the common ground in the mast and I just poked it through here. So we're touching there. And then I thought it would make sense to be connected to this guy, which I originally thought was the common ground. But in reality, the other light connection is right here. And we get a nice beep, what I was looking for. So this is a positive to one wire. The yellow is a positive to another wire. And, uh, and then there's one wire at the top of the mast for the last wire. So it looks like we got it all figured out finally. It just was really confusing. It wouldn't have been the way I would have wired it. But what happened to the light? Oh, uh, yeah, I broke one of the lights. Uh, this little, this thing I thought was a, a twist. I didn't look at it well and I twisted it a little bit too much and one of the knobs came off. But that's okay, both of these lights were non-LED so they were taking more power than they should. So we're just gonna replace them with LED lights. There's two negatives and there's two positives so I'm going to change one of the negatives into a positive so that I can control three lights the top mast light for anchoring then our spreader light here and our deck light which is also here so that's the plan before we mount this mast so I just wanted to show you the couple of changes we were doing to the electric wiring here in the mast so for one, I'm going to just rearrange some of the wires here at the light base where the lights actually clamp in. And then at the breaker panel, I'll have to make a couple of small changes as well. But basically here, it's really easy. I'm just, if you take a look down here, um, I'm just taking this yellow wire, which is going to be my main ground. It's gonna be the ground for both the mast uh, anchor light and the ground for both of these two lights here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of here, remove it from there, and put it where this white and red one is. This red one is going to go, so basically the red one is going to go up here and the yellow one's going to go down there. So there's just going to swap out. This white one is just connected to this one. So now this is going to be my ground point. I'll have a positive point here. And the other white one that's coming to the other light down here will be the other positive. This might be too, uh, sorry if I'm confusing. Warm up, warm up. So now after you got a clean tip, put a little bit on and then go ahead. On this? And, yeah, on the, on the tip and now go ahead and try that again. Way too much safer. I know. I can't feel the heat, so I need to put it on for that. 
Alright, I got all my connections cleaned up with solder and shrink wrap. Now we're good to put this light on. But as you may or may not be able to tell, because of this big cable, I'm going to need to put a little spacer to raise this platform away from the side of the mast for a little bit. This should be in good enough. How's it going? I think it's going. Trying to reconnect everything. We got a new connector because ours was pretty destroyed, eh? Oh yeah, gosh, it was totally destroyed. So, making a nice one. Yeah, it's tight enough. So now this one, you said it's gonna go in which one? Uh, you got white and white, so put that one in red. And then we'll use green and blue for the other. So red's this. So we have some pretty gnarly wires here, but they got all, I'm assuming, rubbing on the keel bolts and stuff, which really isn't good because this is, these are our two positives for both our spreaders, which is the red, and our anchor light on the green. But I realized something just doing some testing around. We were wondering why the, well, I'm not really wondering, I kind of knew why the, the spreader light breaker switch was going off because it, as soon as you turn it on it would switch off and what's happened is we have a ground fault or this this wire that's supposed to be our positive is connected to our negative somewhere and it's probably doing something like this somewhere else and touching somewhere we don't want it so let's go find that <laughs> so the main question I have is whether or not it my problem is within the compression post here all the way up to the deck or if it's from behind. So what I'm going to do where it's damaged here anyway and I want to replace this section, I'm going to cut it with these pliers since I have all my tools in the car. And we're going to do the same test we just did which was just see if there's any continuity or connection between the positive and the negative or the ground. So we got that. Uh, Put that on there, except for it keeps slipping because it's slippery. Come on. You want me to touch the other one? <laughs> okay, so it's inside the mast because it's beeping there. From back here, I'm assuming it shouldn't be beeping unless we have another problem. Yeah, nothing there. Just double check that it didn't just slip on me. Okay, so the problem is from the bottom of the mast here up to the top my assumption is there's a piece of, that's chafed off and it's just touching the mast which is then grounded through this wire to this bolt Um, that didn't seem to come off at all. It seems really solid uh, and I don't think that's just the adhesive underneath there. So my guess is 
these four bolts here at the compression post are holding it. So my new plan is to remove those just enough to hopefully have these bolts still enough fiberglass to kind of keep that in place so I don't lose my bolt holes which I mean really it should stay in place because of the bottom but uh, anyway well we're gonna back these off these four bolts off a little bit and try pulling on that again <laughs> hopefully it goes better wish me luck Yeah, look how long that is. That was definitely through bolted there. So if I remove these, I should be able to get it out. Hopefully it doesn't move on me though. Well, we were wondering why the red wire was grounded to the mast, or what seemed like it was grounded to the mast. And I think these squished wires may be the culprit. <laughs> They're almost like melted in underneath here. And that's why I couldn't pull those wires through because they were kinked underneath this. Well then. That explains a lot. That's terrible. You can see... You can see the bare metal there. And on the black wires. Brutal. We're gonna have to swap out all of these. Alright, so we got all the base cleaned up on both ends, as clean as I'm gonna get it for now. Maybe we'll use some um, acetone or something to get rid of, or varsol to get rid of some, some more of the traces here, but it's not a huge deal. We're gonna throw down some butyl tape down here. Uh, now we're gonna pull the red wire through with a rope and use it to pull some new wire. Thanks a lot to Bill who's Given us some wire to use. And let's do this. So I don't know if you can tell, it's a pretty foggy day. So we're trying to get some of our own boat projects done since we can't do the painting we had planned to do today, at least just not yet, until the sun burns off some of this fog. Um, thanks again to Bill for giving us some wire so we didn't have to go buy some wire. It's not. Um, it's not tinned or anything, but it'll work. I mean, what we had there before wasn't tinned either. So uh, I figured it'll be good enough anyway. All right, well, we already tied a cable to the red line last time when we were trying to do this and then realized there was some reason, for some reason, nothing was pulling through, which we now know is because it pinches all the wires. So we're going to pull this rope through the mast, or through the compression post here, all the way up to the deck. And replace those lines. So that didn't work, it just got stuck. The hole is a bit small for the power wires here. So we're going to chop all this off choppy choppy and not use the pull string we're just going to cut the wires and pull through new ones using these ones so our goal here is to try to make these their own little hooks and then we wrap each of them around each other 
So hopefully these wires, even without any tape, will somewhat hold together. That should do it. Looking good, good looking. <laughs> Eddie? I think so. Alright, let's pull these wires through. Alright. Let's see if these come through. Okay, I'm gonna miss. Hold on, Corey. <laughs> Trying to shove this with one hand is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> 